up everyone, my name is Ozzy and I show you guys how to save money when building computers. Last week I bought one of Amazon's best selling $500 gaming computers. Now I don't have any problems with pre-built computers, but I have a lot of issues with this one. Long story short, it's not worth it. <laughs> with holiday sales coming soon, many aspiring PC gamers will be looking to pick up a computer to start their gaming journey. Let's talk about why this is not a smart choice. This computer is bored baby they give me a broken computer and the alternatives available so here it is why amazon's most sold 500 hundred dollar pc is a bad idea but before i do that i want to thank the sponsor of this video morning brew morning brew turns daily news from a dry chore into an engaging and witty read they send out a daily newsletter that covers business tech finance and world events and the best part, they're completely free. I've been subscribed to Morning Brew for about eight months now, and it's given me my news outlet without turning to a traditional news network or even worse, social media. I read their newsletter during breakfast and it only takes a few minutes. And more recently, my roommate subscribed to Morning Brew and he gave me the great idea of adding it to my Notion workspace. Because I use Notion basically every day in the morning, it makes it even more accessible. This past week, I learned that Jack Dorsey actually resigned as the CEO of Twitter, but he's still the CEO of Square, meaning that before his resignation, he was the CEO of two very popular companies. Jack Dorsey, I don't know how you do it, but whatever you do, please give me your secrets because I can barely <laughs> upload consistently. You're over here like leading two companies. I don't know. Crazy to me. Anyway, if you're interested in business, tech, and finance news, then definitely check out Morning Brew. It's completely free and takes you like 15 seconds to subscribe to their daily newsletter. Let me know what you think, if you've been subscribed for how long, all that kind of stuff in the comments below. Okay, back to the video. I want you guys to close your eyes and just imagine with me for a second. If I was new to PC gaming, or maybe you are, and in that case, I guess you don't really need to imagine, and I wanted to buy a gaming computer for 500 bucks, where would I go? How would I do it? Probably Amazon. If we're being completely honest, you would probably buy this $530 PC from Seller Alarco on Amazon. It's within your budget, it has prime shipping, it has four stars with over 2,000 reviews, and its sister PC with identical specs is Amazon's choice for computers. As a new buyer, it's very safe and it just looks like a good option. Now, this is totally fine if the computer is worth the money. Fact of the matter is, this one just isn't. Now, the hardware doesn't lie, right? So let's take a look at that. The CPU is from 2011, the i5-2400, the video card is a GTX 650, which has one gig of VRAM and it rivals Ryzen's integrated graphics, so they're APUs. It has eight gigs of RAM, which eh, is okay, I guess, and it doesn't have an SSD, only mechanical storage. Now, I don't have any problems with older hardware. I think they're a great way to save money and a great way to save resources, but for 530 bucks, I don't think this is worth it. As a matter of fact, if you were to part out this computer, you would actually be spending about half the amount of money you would by buying it from this person. And even if you spend like $100 for someone else to build it for you, it's still only about $400, which is a good amount less than what you're paying for this PC. Unfortunately, just not a good choice, but I bought it to just test it out and take a closer look. And the results were, Interesting. The computer was packaged well and it arrived intact and the only damage I could find was a scratch on the tempered glass. Now the computer came with this Fortnite settings guide which I found pretty odd. It might be to prevent reviewers like me from roasting the computer. And it also came with a power cord, a Wi-Fi adapter, and an RGB remote control. Now the latter worked functionally. I mean you can change between all the colors. Pretty simple, you just point it at the uh... <laughs> Computer, colors. It has brightness buttons, but it didn't really do much of anything when I tested them. So you're stuck between complete darkness or being blinded by the lights. Also, there just isn't any fan control. I couldn't find it on the remote and I couldn't find it in the BIOS. So the fans were running at full speed the entire time. Honestly, right now, it sounds like everything's running at full blast. CPU fan isn't showing up, so uh, not what you want. 
Now the BIOS itself was pretty suspect. It's not the standard BIOS you'd find on a B75 board. Because these B75 boards have been out of production for at least six or seven years now, my guess is that they've been using the Chinese B75 boards, we all know they're not, with a limited BIOS. Now when I turned the computer on, it booted straight into Windows, which was nice. It didn't have a password and the video card drivers were installed. The Wi-Fi USB adapter was also detected right away when I plugged in, and these were the speeds that I got. In megabits per second, not bytes, we had about 44 for the download, about seven for the upload, and a ping of four milliseconds. Because I had an extra USB Wi-Fi adapter, one that I bought for about 15 bucks, I plugged it in to see what the speed difference was, and it was huge. <laughs> With the upgraded Wi-Fi adapter, we were getting 92 megabits per second, download about 54 upload and ping didn't really change about three milliseconds so if you're going to use the stock wi-fi adapter there's a lot that is left on the table bandwidth wise temperatures on the computer were totally fine though both of the components were under 65 degrees celsius load at peak and on average you have nothing to worry about here here's the gist of it as a general use computer this is perfectly fine you can browse the web watch videos do any kind of office things office tasks It'll be perfectly fine, but you can also buy a general use office computer for like $100 on eBay. What that extra $400 is for is the gaming aspect of things. So I'm going to go download some games and we'll see if the extra money is worth it. I'll be back in a few hours. Little did I know that a few hours would become a few days. No. <laughs> Yep, our $500 PC was slowly becoming a dead weight. The computer started crashing if I installed multiple applications at once, and then the Wi-Fi also stopped working. I don't think my internet is working now. <laughs> Eventually, the hard drive became corrupt altogether. Honestly, I try to give companies the benefit of the doubt whenever I receive a defective product, because it happens. But if you search blue screen, crash, or corrupt, there are way too many reviews for me to just bat an eye. Anyway, I tried to uninstall my games hoping that would fix it. That failed. I tried a system restore. That also failed. As a last resort, I finally tried to reinstall Windows 10. And even that failed. This computer is borked, baby. They give me a broken computer. Which I just don't understand. <laughs> I eventually caved, went over to Micro Center and bought an SSD to replace the hard drive. But then that failed too. What are the odds that the hard drive is busted and the SSD I got is also broken? Running out of options, I decided to just replace the SATA data cable, hoping that that would fix it. <laughs> yeah. Oh wait. And boom. What did you do? Everything was running perfectly fine. You like showed up and it started working. <laughs> Magic. <laughs> what? I knew that this gaming computer wouldn't be that good at gaming, but I also didn't expect it to just suck at being a computer too. Yeah, so those $100 eBay computers, they seem a lot sweeter now. <sighs> After days of troubleshooting, we finally got the Amazon PC working, so let's just jump right into benchmarks because I don't want it to break again. So on the listing, the seller actually says that you can play Fortnite at 120 FPS on low settings, PUBG at 30 FPS, low settings, and GTA 5, 30 FPS on low settings. So first up, we have Fortnite. Using the settings that they gave me, 1600 by 900, everything on low except for view distance, which is at an epic setting, we got 63. Yeah, I know with a 1% low of 30, which means that 99% of the time, the computer was at least pushing 30 FPS. Now, don't get me wrong, it was still fun, it was still playable, but it just wasn't what was advertised. Next, we have GTA 5, which is a great game, still looks good, and is optimized for older and lower end hardware. Now, the seller said that we should be able to get 30 FPS with low, AKA normal settings. So using normal settings with a resolution of 1920 by 1080, we got an average of 66 FPS and a 1% low of 53 in the benchmark. So it passes. Gaming was totally fine here and it wasn't falsely advertised. And lastly, we have PUBG and oh man, PUBG. The seller advertised 30 FPS on average using low settings. Now at 1080p with a render scale of 100% and everything on very low, I did average 31 FPS with a 1% low of 23, 
in training mode. I guess they're not technically wrong here because in training mode, you will average 30 FPS. As soon as I dropped into an actual match, my average dipped to 23 with a 1% minimum of 14. And actually, I had to lower the settings significantly to a resolution of 1600 by 900 and a render skill of 70%, which means that the internal resolution is only slightly higher than 720p for me to average around 30 FPS. They're technically not wrong, but still, it's just, you shouldn't do that. I wanna show you guys a better alternative that you can build for cheaper than this that will look better, perform better, and give you an upgrade path. So we're gonna head over to the greatest store on the planet, Micro Center, which not sponsored, by the way, to go build something a little bit better than this one. total for the Micro Center build ended up being about $512 after taxes are taken into account. Now I understand that not everyone has a Micro Center close to them and Micro Center has some killer deals, but I know that through Black Friday, Cyber Monday, and then also some Christmas sales, you'll be able to find all of these parts for around the same price on Amazon or Newegg. For the CPU, we have a Ryzen 5 5600G, which is six cores and 12 threads, much faster, like, 400% faster at least than the i5-2400 in the Amazon PC. Our motherboard is the B450M2 Turf from Asus, and it can support up to a Ryzen 9 5950X, 16 cores and 32 threads. We have 16 gigs of DDR4 memory in dual channel. It's one generation newer than the Amazon PC, and it's also just double the amount of memory, which is always good. In terms of storage, we had an SSD, which isn't corrupt and the gpu in the micro center pc is the vega 7 it's integrated in the ryzen 5 cpu and it's about the same performance as the gtx 650 but i think in combination with the much faster cpu it's going to be a much faster package now that you've seen the computer Let's see how it performs relative to the Amazon computer. Fortnite, the Amazon PC got an average of 63 and a 1% low of 30. The Micro Center PC got an average of 117, almost double the Amazon one, and a 1% low of 26. Now that 1% low does seem very concerning, but it actually wasn't as choppy as I was experiencing it anyway. In GTA 5, the Amazon PC got an average of 66 and a 1% low of 53. The Micro Center PC got an average of 78 and a 1% low of 65. And lastly, in PUBG, the Amazon PC had an average of 23 and a 1% low of 14 in game at 1080p, very low, 100% render scale. Using the same settings, the Micro Center PC had an average of 51 in game with a 1% low of 30 more than double the performance in that game, which is very important for a game like PUBG. Obviously, gaming performance is across the board much better on the Micro Center PC, and you also have breathing room to do other things like multitasking while gaming, streaming while gaming, etc. And then there are things that I like to call the unnoticeables that don't directly affect performance per se, but they do affect the security, reliability, and the total benefit that you get out of the computer. Now credit where credit's due, the Amazon PC that you see right here, closest to me, it does look pretty good. Unfortunately, that's kind of where the positives end. The motherboard just doesn't have a great upgrade path. The highest end processor on this Amazon PC that you could upgrade to is probably a low end to at best mid tier processor on the Micro Center PC you see right here. And then you have the power supply. You should never skimp out on your power supply because if that dies, it can take all the other components with it. When I looked up the power supply model, I honestly couldn't find anything on it. Very little reviews, which is usually a red flag that you should avoid it. It turns out that this power supply actually comes with the Amazon computer case. So it's pre-installed in the case. Those pre-installed power supplies are definitely lower quality because they're a cost-saving measure. And then oddly enough, the Micro Center PC is actually cheaper than the Amazon computer. So you're also saving money. It's a big deal. All in all, if you have the ability to actually build the computer instead of buy it, 
you should definitely go for it. Okay, Ozzy, that's cool and all, but what if I don't want to build a computer? Man, I am so glad you asked that question. If you don't want to build a computer for $500, you still have options. Now, you won't be able to find a good computer at that price from one of the major retailers like Origin PC or iBuyPowerPC, but you can still find them at boutique shops. PC building has become so much more mainstream, so much more accessible that there are a ton of different sellers. And because they don't have to meet certain margins, they can use used components. They can get you a pretty good PC within an affordable budget, like 500 or so dollars. You can go to local classifieds like Facebook or Craigslist to find computers like this. But if you want some place that you can trust, you can go to Jawa. They have a ton of computers in this price range. And I know a lot of the sellers like Mountain Man PCs, uh, George from GTech, he just recently started selling on there and Randy's sleeper PC built he always has great deals on top of that I have a lot of friends who sell the computers that they build Zach from Zach's tech turf for instance just recently had a site-wide sale Christopher Yi, Danny from nerd on a budget a lot of other people tech youtubers too also sell their computers as you can see buying these computers off of Amazon especially for such a low price means that so many corners are cut either build your own which is pretty straightforward, especially nowadays with accessibility and internet information, or you can just buy one from a boutique shop. With all of that being said though, thank you guys so much for watching. If you guys liked this video, then leave a like. If you loved it, share, subscribe, all that kind of stuff. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.